everybody, The Log Gnome is here, and welcome to your November 2017 Funko Pop update. And as the year is drawing to a close, I have to say that we're definitely going to a new level when it comes to talking about Funko Pop news, as well as talking about my collection. So, as we all know, last month New York Comic Con officially passed, and I think in the last two months I may have gone a little overboard in regards to collecting pops, and that is just because of the fact that Funko is going overboard as well, constantly cranking out new lines, new exclusives, remakes of old favorites that were in dire need of a makeover, and my god, Funko is just doing all the wonderful things that a collector could possibly ask for, and that's probably the biggest blessing and the biggest curse. But I think that at this point in time, there's going to be no such thing as an oversized pop update because I think all of my pop updates from here on end are going to be oversized just because of how much news comes to me on a weekly basis. So once again, make yourselves comfortable, grab a drink, grab a snack because we've got a lot of stuff to go over this time around. But before we get into all of the news, let's take a look at how my collection has been going. So I am so excited to bring this little pop update to you in regards to my collection. I know that Halloween has passed, but I wanted to make one that totally revolved around monsters because a lot of the pops that I recently picked up were in fact in the horror slash horror comedy line, and I thought that this would be really great if I could just show them all to you in one grouping and also give a chance for some of my older pops in my collection to show up once again because they fit with this new group, as well as is giving newcomers to my channel a chance to see some of my other pops that I had collected such a while back. So let's begin with the horror comedy with a classic cartoon character. I had no anticipation to really pick this one up, but I loved the fact that he was becoming a pop. And yes, now I know that Funko, if you go to their direct store online, you can get a flocked version of this guy, but it is the Looney Tunes character Gossamer, also known as the Big Red Monster that Bugs Bunny loves to toy with. And he was one of the specialty series, which means that they were only distributed through comic stores and hobby shops. And I just wanted to get my hands on this one at the end of the day because I just saw him all the time in one of my local comic stores, and I just said, you know what, let me just go after him because I've been making all of these great videos with his clip from the Bugs Bunny cartoon, and as cool as it would be to have a flocked one, because it makes sense, the fact that I have a specialty series box just makes it all the more special, but this is a very simple yet pretty awesome pop. I love the design and how the fur looks all over. I also love the look of his sneakers, and I love the expression on his face, as well as the yellow and black fingernails, and he is just just an awesome character to have, especially if you are a true Looney Tunes fan, which I am, and I'm just so glad that I actually have another Looney Tunes pop in my collection. Let's take a look at these guys over here. So Billy, of course, from Saw, is one of my favorite horror film franchises, and I'm not really the biggest fan of horror, and he is one of the older ones in the horror collection, but when it comes to the horror pops, they really go a little extra further in regards to details, and I loved this character when I first finally saw him. I love the fact that he had black eyes with little red rings in them. I love the little swirlies on his cheeks. I thought that they were fantastic. Also, the mouth looked perfect with the little cleft chin, as well as the little suit and bow tie that he has with the red shoes. He really was one of the better looking pops, along with all the other horror ones. But recently, I had two other horror-themed pops that joined my collection. Now, let's talk about the one in the center. When it comes to horror movies, Alfred Hitchcock is one of the forefathers, along with the Universal movie collections. He just took horror and suspense and thriller to a whole other level. And when I heard that Norman Bates was going to become a pop, I was excited. But when I heard about the fact that FYE was going to make an exclusive black and white Norman Bates, because that's the only way to really see Norman Bates if you are a Psycho fan, I said, this one is going to join my collection. I saw the original film from 1960 recently, and it's one of my all-time favorite movies at this point in time. And there was a little bit of a shock and horror if you will, because I knew that he was going to be an FYE exclusive, and then 
FYE announced that he was only going to be sold at the New York City Comic Con booth, and I was like, oh, damn it, I'll never get him. But just about a week after the Comic Con was done, they had posted the fact that you could purchase him on their website for no crazy price charge, better than going on eBay, so good things come to those who wait. It's a fantastic pop, because not only does it have the FYE exclusive sticker, it also has the New York City Comic Con sticker on it, and I love the details. I love the black and white. The little bit of his hair underneath the wig is pretty awesome. I also love the style of the hair with the bun in the back. I love the pattern on the dress, and I love the fact that the knife is stained in black blood, because I've never had an other black and white Funko Pop next to my Steamboat Willie, which is now super rare, so to actually have another black and white pop with a great story attached to it is wonderful. But then we've got this guy over here with another awesome story. So, I love Stephen King's It, and I love the new movie. It is wonderful. One of the best films that I have seen this year, and I knew that I was going to want a Pennywise pop for my very own. Even though they did make the Tim Curry from the 1990s from the television miniseries, I really didn't think that I was going to want to go after that one. I wanted to see what the movie would be like, and my god, this Pennywise is fantastic. So, Hot Topic, of course, made this exclusive, and it's just not Pennywise without the red balloon. So, I had been waiting very patiently for this exclusive to come out, and it just happened to be that I was going to be able to go to a Hot Topic because I took a personal day, and I said, let me see if Hot Topic finally has it. So I went to my Hot Topic, and I looked, and they only had the one with the little paper boat, and the woman who was minding the store comes up to me and says, can I help you with something? And she, I said, yeah, I'd like to get your exclusive Pennywise. Do you have him? And she's like, I wasn't sure if we even were having an exclusive. What does he look like? Because I want to get one for myself. And I said, um, it's him holding the red balloon. And she says, that's pretty damn awesome. So then she just goes, and I'm just still browsing the store, and then I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not gonna have any luck today. So I was leaving the store, and all of a sudden I hear a, wait, sir, wait! And I turn around, it's her, and she says, my manager just told me that we just got our Hot Topic exclusive Pennywises in today. If you just sit right here, I will go into the back, and my manager will give me one for you. So she brought it out, and there, and lo and behold, he was. And then, because of the fact that it was just a few weeks after my birthday, she said, you're a Hot Topic member, you have a birthday discount. And I said, okay, what does that mean? She goes, this is going to cost you $8 instead of 12 Oh, happy day. Hot Topic actually comes through. So let's get a good look at this pop. First of all, I love the fact that he's got the blue eyes and not the yellow eyes because the silvery blue is supposed to be his welcoming look. I love the grin, the detail of the red makeup on the pale white face. I love the way his hair looks. The details on his little clown costume are fantastic. The real gritty grayish white and the feet that look like teeth on the bottom of his feet with the little red pom-poms, and I love the way the balloon looks. It's not a bright red, it is a very dull red, but I love this pop so much, and I'm just so happy that I have these horror ones in my collection. And now let's take a look at these guys. So, you all know that I love the Metal Luna Space Mutant from This Island Earth, the Universal Classic, and this is a very simple pop. I was actually quite surprised that he did become a pop, but the only reason why I wanted this pop was because of them. Mystery Science Theater 3000 Pops, we've got Tom Servo and Crow. If you don't watch this show, you have no idea what you're missing. These are such awesome pops, and I'm so happy to have them in my collection. I take a look at them, and all I can think about is all of the great lines, especially from the movie where they actually reviewed this island Earth. So we've got Crow T. Robot, and he's just... You know, simple yet complex all at the same time. I love the details on his arms, and I don't think we ever saw his feet on the show, because, of course, he's a puppet, so it was just really cool to actually see him. And, of course, the expression is absolutely priceless, although with the design of Pops, I have to admit that his head is a little bit wonky to me, but that's just me. It's just cool to have him, but I love the Tom Servo. I love the fact that he's got the clear dome on the top of him and the little mouth over here. You probably realize it's a little gumball machine, but I love these two characters so much, and every single time I look at them, I just think of all of the awesome things, especially because of the fact that they called him the Metal Luna Space Mutant, Uncle Scrotor, and I still want to give him a hug, thanks to these two guys, because they are just fantastic and awesome, and that pretty much wraps up all of what I wanted to discuss today in regards to the Pops. So many awesome ones, so happy to have them in my collection, and what are we waiting for? Let's get on to all of the new Pop news. 
So as promised, I told you that we were going to have two specialty series, so these are the ones from last month and the current month, and they're definitely two interesting ones. We've got Rose, one of these brand new characters that we don't know much about, but she is going to be making a big appearance with a big role in The Last Jedi, so this is her in her First Order gear, which makes me kind of now wonder what side she's on, so I am very intrigued to see what this character is all about. And we've also got one from a brand new series that is actually going to be talked about a little bit later, and quite frankly, I think this was a long time coming, and that is Uncle Traveling Matt from Fraggle Rock. And as you can see on the box, it says Fraggle Rock 35th Anniversary. That's pretty damn awesome. I cannot believe the fact that this show has been around for 35 years just shows how old I am, but I love the details in both of them, particularly Uncle Traveling Matt. I just love all the textures and the colors on him, and I'm very curious to see just how many people are going to go out and buy that one, but again, these are both going to be found at your local comic and hobby shops, and they definitely are good things that fans like to receive. And we've got plenty of amazing things from the Funko store, and some of these, unfortunately, are not obtainable anymore. And it's kind of a shame, because more ad icons came, which were three more characters from serials. We have Sunny the Cuckoo Bird, Tricks the Rabbit, and Lucky the Leprechaun, and that's pretty awesome. I mean, these are three legendary kids' serials, but unfortunately, they sold out, like, three minutes after they were posted. And like Tony the Tiger... And of course, all the monster cereals, we don't seem to know if they're ever going to come back, and there's a very good chance that they won't. But we also have a new Looney Tunes flocked gossamer, and we have the continuation of the Funko Monsters of Wetmore Forest line with Chester McFreckle, who is probably the cutest out of all of them, as well as the new Zodiac, which is Scorpio, and I gotta say that that one is badass looking. Kinda makes me wish that I was a Scorpio and not a Virgo, but we can't change that at this point in time. But Scorpios, your Zodiac is here in Funko form. Go out and get it along with the others, and who knows what's gonna happen if these other certain breakfast cereal ones will come back. And of course, we now know what the Smuggler's Bounty box is going to include. It is going to be Poe Dameron with his X-Wing fighter with little BB-8 in the back, and that is pretty awesome. But I have a feeling there is going to be another pop in the box, and we're just going to have to find out exactly what it is when the time comes around. We also have some new exclusives, one that was supposed to come out a while ago. It was actually featured at Comic Fest, and it is the PX previous exclusive of Sparkling Emma Frost. We also have two new Walgreens exclusives. Exclusives, which are Valkyrie and Spider-Man in the big time suit. This is just a repaint of his suit that was glowing green and now it's red. But I think the one that a lot of people are going to be excited for is the 10-inch supersized pop of the Hulk from Thor Ragnarok. It is the regular sized pop just blown up in gigantic proportions, but then again, Hulk really should be that big. We also found out about the two pops that were included in the Thor Ragnarok Marvel Collector Core box, and they are pretty awesome. It is Loki with his two daggers, and instead of the blue, he is just wearing his classic black with his helmet on, as well as Thor in the arena gear with his helmet on. So again, two very good-looking detailed pops. I'm sure there's a lot of people who have the box that are really satisfied with these two. And along with those, we also received some very interesting Walmart exclusives. It is Stan Lee in his appearances in MCU movies. So we have three roles of his as him in Guardians of the Galaxy, as well as Captain America the Winter Soldier and Captain America Civil War. I'm wondering if this means we will see more of these from outside the MCU. Like, I think a lot of people would be excited to see him from the original Fantastic Four movie as the Postman, but that's just me. And we also have some news from DC. It looks like PX Previews is going to be offering two versions of a double pack, which include two fan-favorite characters. Blue Beetle, that's the Ted Cord Blue Beetle, not the Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle, and Booster Gold. Not so keen on the color scheme of Booster Gold. I don't recall him being orange and violet as opposed to yellow and blue, but I guess that's the way it's going for now. But people who don't really know these characters, definitely check them out on Wikipedia. They are definitely cool characters in the world of 
DC. And of course, we also received the DC Legion of Collectors box, and I gotta tell you, they are definitely cool-looking pops. We've got Aquaman jumping out of the water, as well as the villain that I was so excited to finally receive. I knew he was gonna be in this box, and that, of course, was Steppenwolf. And Entertainment Earth, of course, is including some DC specials. They have a whole group of silhouette Justice League members. And I like the fact that they are the old school DC look. You have everybody from the big three, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman, to Green Lantern, to Cyborg, as well as the Flash and Aquaman. So lots of glow-in-the-dark silhouettes. Very cool looking. I'm sure there's going to be DC fans going out to get these. And Entertainment Earth is also including some new Disney stuff. We are going to be getting a flocked Rafiki with baby. Simba and a flocked Simba with leaf crown. I know that Lion King fans are probably excited for this, so why not go and get them for yourselves? Entertainment Earth, great place to get your pops. They really handle your stuff with care. And Hot Topic is including a whole bunch of new exclusives from so many different areas. We've got everything from Dapper Sally to two versions of Elvira, and one of them is going to be a glow-in-the-dark chase. We also have two alternate universe DC characters, which is Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne as the Joker. Very cool. But a lot of people are probably excited for the gold Shenron from Dragon Ball Z. I've got my regular. I'm fine with that. But Hot Topic is going to give you guys this gold exclusive, so if you want to go out and get it. And they're also going to be getting some shared exclusives from the Los Angeles Stanley Comic Con, and that includes everything from a flocked snowball from Rick and Morty to a Kevin Smith, as well as a glow-in-the-dark Ahsoka and Moon Knight. And that's actually going to be a chase. There's also going to be a regular one that's going to be included that doesn't glow in the dark, but it is pretty cool to know that Moon Knight is going to be a pop, and there's also rumors that there's going to be another Moon Knight that is going to be him in the classic original look. That basically means the big white cloak and hood. Pretty cool. Gemini Collectibles and FYE are giving us some new animation exclusives. We've got Reptar eating cereal from FYE, as well as a flocked Yogi Bear from Gemini Collectibles. He comes onto the site on and off. Definitely check out your Pop Fanatics over on your local Twitter feed to find out if and when he is going to be coming back to buy on the website. And we've also got some new Toys R Us exclusives coming out. One of them is from the WWE line, Shinzuke Nakamura. We've also got one of the Snow White Pops, which is her in her peasant clothes. But the cool one is the new ad icon, which is Jeffrey the Giraffe. That's number 12 in the set. Pretty cool to see him. And... Why wouldn't he be a Toys R Us exclusive? And probably one of the more interesting pops that was announced last month was the fact that Walmart is going to be getting the first of the new line of board games. We've got Mr. Monopoly, but his real name is Rich Uncle Pennybags. Love the way he looks. I'm going to try and get my hands on this one and add it to my collection because I've played Monopoly. I love the character. It would be really cool to see more, but I'm really curious to know exactly how many more board game characters could possibly Possibly be made. Put your comments in the box below if you have any ideas. And WWE is also going to be expanding their lines with a whole bunch of awesome chases and exclusives, like the double pack of the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, and IRS, including a classic old school looking Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock. But I think the one that I am so excited to see is Razor Ramon, who is going to be getting his own chase. He is one of the classic ones from the 1990s. Very cool to see him, which always makes me excited to see what other characters will be introduced from the WWE line in the future, because this is turning out to be an extremely popular line. And there's so much coming out in the world of video games. I've never played the game The Neighbor, but I know exactly what it is, and it looks like we've got so many versions of The Neighbor himself, and we've got everything from Barnes & Noble exclusives to FYE to Walmart. I've never played this game, don't know much about it, but it is really cool to actually see this cult favorite video game becoming a pop line. And we've got some more double packs coming from the Marvel vs. Capcom line, and it is Black Panther vs. Monster Hunter. Very interesting look we got here, along with a Best Buy exclusive with a different color scheme. And we've also got three pops coming from the new Guardians of the Galaxy video game that I didn't know about. We've got 
two regular ones, including Hala and Gamora, as well as a double pack of Rocket and Lila. Again, don't know much about this. I really don't know anything about this video game, so put your comments in the box below and let me know what this Guardians of the Galaxy game is about. And a line from the video game line that I am so excited about is the fact that Sonic the Hedgehog is getting a much-deserved makeover. We've got everything from various versions of Sonic, as well as Shadow, and Dr. Robotnik, a.k.a. Egg, Eggman, but we've also got three exclusives here. It looks like we've got a glow-in-the-dark one from Toys R Us, and we've got a Supersonic from GameStop, as well as a Hot Topic exclusive of Shadow. I personally am planning to get one of these for my collection. I would love to get Sonic. It's probably going to be him holding the Chaos Emerald, but I'm really curious to know if we're going to get more characters. Like, I would love to see Tails and Knuckles get a makeover as well, along with a whole bunch of other Sonic the Hedgehog characters. Really nice to see these characters getting a much-deserved revamp. And the 8-bit line is continuing on. We saw the 8-bit version of the Shredder, which is obviously a homage to the classic arcade game, and the Turtles are getting a makeover as well into the world of 8-bit. And I think that that's pretty cool. Not interested in getting these, even though I did actually see the 8-bit pops up close. I gotta admit, they're very unique. I love the details, but I'm sure that video game fans will get their hands on these. And we've got some new exclusives coming from GameStop and PX previews. We've got horror characters, including Jason, Freddy Krueger, and we've also got the Xenomorph, and we've got some really awesome specials, including an NES version of Freddy Krueger and Jason, which I think is definitely something for the old-school Nintendo fans. So it actually makes so much sense to see these characters in 8-bit. And Stranger Things is getting an 8-bit upgrade, too, because there's apparently a little game of Stranger Things, and it is also an 8-bit game, so these characters are all going to be available at Target, so that means they're probably going to be extremely hard to find, but again, it's really interesting to see these characters turned into 8-bit, especially the Demogorgon. And speaking of Stranger Things, Wave 3 is coming out, especially if you've watched Season 2. I'm sure you're all excited to get your hands on these new pops. I love the fact that we've got all four of the boys in Ghostbuster costumes, as well as the new Eleven and Joyce, as well as the new character Max. I've seen the show, Max definitely has a good role, and her Hot Topic exclusive of her in the Michael Myers Halloween outfit is pretty badass. And I think BookTube literally exploded with excitement when they found out that the new comics line adding the Image Comic Sensation Saga to their collection. I don't know anything about this comic book series. I'm sure that booktubers around the globe can explain how good it is, but there's going to be so many things to go after, including a whole bunch of exclusives from Barnes & Noble and Hot Topic, as well as a chase, and of course, the one in the bottom row in the middle, the Bloody Lion Cat, is going to be available at comic book stores across the country on free comic book day later on in spring 2018. So, Saga fans, I'm sure you're all so excited for this line. I don't know how many characters they could possibly continue making because, again, I don't know much about this series, but I'm sure you're all excited for these. And Dragon Ball Super is getting a pop line. Not so thrilled about the fact that they're not continuing with Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball at this point in time. I really hope they do. I don't know much about this series because I haven't watched it yet. I know that it's coming out on Blu-ray and DVD, but I would like to get it when it comes out on the seasons, but for what I'm seeing right now, they do look pretty awesome. I love the way that the trunks looks, and of course, on the bottom row, there are a whole bunch of exclusives. One of them is a Diamond Comic exclusive, and that's the Gotenks, and there's also going to be one from Toys R Us, Walmart, and the Super Saiyan Trunks is going to be a Hot Topic exclusive. And... <laughs> this is what makes Funko so great. Mr. Bean, the pop culture icon from the UK, is getting a pop. You can get the regular and you can get the chase with a whole turkey on his head that's obviously from the movie. And everyone I know who is a fan of Mr. Bean is so excited for this line to come out. I don't know if this is going to be the only one or if there's going to be more, but the fact that they're going this far to make such a cult classic character into a pop just shows you why this company is so successful. And we're getting an expansion on the Teen Titans Go line. It looks like we have a couple more disguised ones, like Robin as Nightwing or Starfire as Batgirl. But we also have Mammoth coming, who is part of the Hive, obviously. And there are also going to be some exclusives as well. One from Toys R Us, one from Books A Million, and one from Hot Topic. 
And it's so nice to know that they are deciding to continue the He-Man line. This was a line that started off years ago when I first discovered Pops. So the original ones are kind of hard to find now. But when Man-at-Arms and Trapjaw became specialty series Pops and a flocked Beastman showed up at New York Comic Con, I knew that this was getting a revival. And my God, they did. They've got Battle Armor, He-Man, and Skeletor. Those are based on the old action figures I actually had the battle armor he-man so it is so cool to see that but we've also got orko and stratos but we also have tons of villains including a regular beast man a merman along with a chase and an evil lin as well as some exclusives including an fye exclusive version of trapjaw but also a toys r us exclusive of moss man who is flocked just like the figure was and a target exclusive of faker so masters of the universe fans it's great to see see more of these. I'm hoping that more are going to come out at this point in time. We'll see how well these sell, and maybe we'll get some more she ones as well, because there's a lot of people who made she their holy grail, and they never found her, so maybe she'll finally get a makeover herself. And the Looney Tunes line is coming out in full force. No more exclusives, everybody. These are going to be in retail everywhere, except for the Target exclusive of Flocked Bugs Bunny, but you can get Bugs, Daffy, Taz, Sylvester with Tweety, and the Elmer Fudd and the Bugs Bunny from the opera episode, which look fantastic. So nice to actually see Looney Tunes finally happening and becoming Pops. And as I said earlier, I was going to be showing more of these. Fraggle Rock has a pop line coming, and Fraggle Rock is one of my wife's favorite shows when she was growing up. When I showed her the pop line, I have never seen her so excited to actually get her hands on Pops, and each and every one of them comes with a doozer, which is even cuter. She said she's probably going to get three at this point in time. She may get more. I don't know. But there's also some exclusives, including a flocked red from Books A Million and a Toys R Us exclusive of Sprocket the dog, which is actually one of the three that my wife currently wants. So it's nice to actually see something from Pops that my wife is just so excited to receive. And Disney has a couple of exclusives coming. We have from Boxed Lunch, Zero with a bone. And I love the way he looks. He's actually floating on a little platform, which is really nice to see. And he's also going to have a glow-in-the-dark chase. And there's a Best Buy exclusive of... Olaf and Sven, which apparently has just been labeled as Olaf's Frozen Adventure, but we all know that these are the original Olaf and Sven from the Frozen line from three years ago, and we actually have Olaf and Sven, so this is just rebranding, so if Olaf and Sven are hard to find right now, then this is a good way to actually get your hands on them if you miss them. And we've got the Emperor's New Groove line. It is awesome. I love the fact that this movie is coming out as Pops. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of the movie, I will not lie that Kronk is one of the greatest villain sidekicks in the Disney film library. You've also got Yzma with a glow-in-the-dark chase and a Hot Topic exclusive of Kuzco as a llama. I don't know if I want to get my hands on the Kronk just yet, but if they actually make a special edition of Kronk with a squirrel on his shoulder, I will probably go after that one. But these do look very, very good. And it's been a long time coming, everybody, but Aladdin is finally getting the expansion, and we are finally getting an Aladdin pop, along with a Jasmine from the end scenes of Aladdin. We've got Genie Jafar, along with a Chase, which is Glow in the Dark. We also have a sparkling Princess Jasmine from Barnes & Noble, and we've got Raja and Abu, and we've got Flock Raja and Abu. The Abu is from Hot Topic, and the Flock Raja is from Books A Million. A little upset over the fact that they they didn't give Genie a remodeling. Maybe that will happen soon, but it is nice to see that Aladdin is finally becoming a Funko Pop. And the new Disney Pixar film Coco is getting a line too. We have a whole bunch of them, including a Toys R Us exclusive, which is Glow in the Dark, as well as a chase figure of Miguel. I don't know much about the movie yet because obviously it's not out in theaters, but I'm planning to see it. It looks wonderful. And pop fans, if you're fans of Coco, you're probably going to want to get these pops too. And GameStop offered a Kingdom Hearts box last month, and it includes a triple pack of Kingdom Hearts, Sora, Donald, and Goofy in Space Paranoid gear, which is amazing. There's also a chase that goes along with these, which is all three of them glow in the dark. And as a gamer, 
this is something that they that you would probably want as a fan of Tron. This might be something that you might want, but as a Disney fan in general, if you are diehard fans, these are most likely a must for your collection. I've actually seen what they look like up close, and my god, they do look fantastic. And Star Wars is just going all out in anticipation for the new movie. We have everything from Costco Rebel 4-pack and First Order 4-packs, and what makes these stand out is the fact that the Rey and the Kylo Ren have glow-in-the-dark lightsabers, which is pretty cool. We've also got two deluxe figures, which includes Kylo Ren in his TIE Interceptor, as well as a Walgreens exclusive of Wedge Antilles in a snow speeder, not to mention a triple pack. I believe this is a Walmart exclusive triple pack, which includes three X Wing pilots Wedge, Biggs, and Porkins. But we're not stopping there because we are just getting way too much. I mean, seriously, has Funko gone too far with these Star Wars movie moments, which are basically these little displays of two characters each in pop form from a scene from Star Wars? We have Everything from a Walgreens exclusive, which is the Cloud City duel of Luke and Darth Vader, and we all know what happens there, but from Walmart we have four additional ones, which are Luke and Leia in the garbage dispenser, C-3PO and R2-D2 landing on Tatooine, we have Han and Greedo in the Mos Eisley Cantina, and we have the showdown of Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, do I want to get one of these? Not these, but... If they decide to expand this whole movie moment thing to other movies, I would seriously consider. Like, if they made a movie moments version of Marty and Doc in the mall parking lot testing out the time machine, that would be a must-have for me. But it's interesting. I would definitely be certain that Star Wars fans are going to get these, and we'll see what happens next. And finally, if there's one thing that I'm so happy about is that I finally have a pop to give to my father. Welcome to the James Bond line. This is pretty awesome because not only do you get some of the best well-known villains in all of film, but you get various versions of James Bond as well. And on top of that, you actually get to see what movies these James Bond characters are in. So we've got Roger Moore as James Bond and Sean Connery as James Bond, not to mention three great villains, including Blofeld, Odd Job, and Jaws, a golden girl from Goldfinger, and it's just not going to be a James Bond series without exclusives. We've got an exclusive of Odd Job from Target, a Roger Moore James Bond exclusive from Barnes & Noble, and a Sean Connery James Bond from Toys R Us. This is pretty awesome. This line has tons of potential to become something great, and I'm really curious to see what's going to happen with this line. And this is just a fantastic month for Funko, everybody. They just actually gave their initial public offering on NASDAQ, so if you love Pops, why not invest in them too? Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Always a pleasure to talk Funko Pops with you. Please leave your comments in the box below so we can talk a little bit more, and I'm looking forward to wrapping up another year of Funko Pop updates in December. I will see you in the next one. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. If you're new here and want to see more of what my channel has to offer, please click on the link to my last video or hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of my uploads. Content of all sorts is posted here quite often, so trust me, you do not want to fall behind. I will see you in the comments, and actions speak louder than words.